Today, we're diving into an in-depth exploration of the notorious Black Pearl episode from the second season of Kitchen Nightmares. We're going to answer the burning question, is the restaurant still operating? This particular episode was quite tumultuous, with Gordon Ramsay departing on rocky terms with the owners. Let's dissect the episode and see whether the restaurant managed to survive post-airing. As the episode opens, we learn that the Black Pearl was started by David Leonard and Brian Woods, who had a vision of bringing Maine seafood to the heart of New York City. Initially a humble lobster shack downtown, they soon relocated to Midtown. They had the lofty ambitions of becoming Manhattan's premier lobster restaurant. They were passionate about their concept and hoped to carve out a niche in the competitive restaurant scene. However, as the business grew, they realized they needed additional help and expertise. This led them to bring on a third partner, Greg Ryan. Greg was seen as a valuable addition to the team, bringing his own set of skills and experiences to the table. Despite the potential for a successful partnership, the relationship between the three owners was fraught with disagreements and conflicts. Their differing views on how to run the restaurant led to frequent clashes, creating a tense and unstable work environment. This lack of unity and clear direction had a negative impact on the overall functioning of the restaurant. Interestingly, the staff at the Black Pearl had their own perceptions of the owners. To them, Brian doesn't seem passionate about running a restaurant and would probably be happier if he were a silent partner. David is the least popular of the three with the staff. They viewed Greg as the most competent despite acknowledging that he too made mistakes. This could be attributed to Greg's ability to connect with the staff, or his approach to managing the restaurant. The staff, while appreciative of Greg, was caught in the middle of these conflicts between the owners, further exacerbating the restaurant's problems. Upon his arrival at the Black Pearl, Gordon Ramsay starts by engaging with the staff, a crucial source of information about the day-to-day -day operations of the restaurant. The staff reveals to Gordon that the three owners are rarely present at the restaurant simultaneously. This is a red flag for Gordon as it suggests a lack of coordination and shared responsibility among the owners, which could be contributing to the restaurant's problems. Then a scene that will forever live in infamy happened. David walks in. And what an entrance this is. Looking like a mob boss, you can already feel the tension between him and Gordon. Gordon seizes the opportunity to directly question David about his role and involvement in the restaurant. David asserts that he is a hands-on owner, claiming to be at the restaurant three to four times a week. This statement is significant, as it gives Gordon an insight into David's perception of his own role. However, it also raises questions about the effectiveness of David's management style, given the issues the restaurant is facing. Oddly enough, after this, David says that he felt Gordon was confrontational because of this encounter. As part of his initial assessment of the Black Pearl, Gordon Ramsay decides to experience the restaurant as a customer would. He orders a variety of dishes to get a sense of the restaurant's culinary offerings and the quality of the food. The dishes he orders are representative of the restaurant's seafood theme and include New England clam chowder, lobster mac and cheese, and lobster rolls. However, Gordon finds most of the dishes unsatisfactory. The one bright side in this whole time is that Gordon Ramsay likes Stephen, the server who is doing a great job. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Despite the restaurant's lack of success. After trying the food, Gordon gathers the three owners and the head chef, Bill. A significant point of contention arises between Gordon and David over the main lobster roll, a dish that should be a standout item given the restaurant's focus on main seafood. Gordon takes issue with the quality of the dish, particularly its lack of seasoning. David, however, defends the lobster roll, insisting that the lack of seasoning is authentic to the way it's prepared in Maine. We then learn that the restaurant is a cool quarter of a million dollars in debt. Digging further into the issue, Gordon finds out that there's been a massive falling out between the three owners. Ramsey then decides to observe a dinner service at the Black Pearl. However, the dinner service is further marred by customer complaints, indicating that Gordon's criticisms are not isolated opinions, but are shared by the restaurant's patrons. These complaints, along with the disagreements between Gordon and David, create a tense and challenging atmosphere during the service. To make matters even worse, Gordon later discovers that the main lobster roll isn't even made with main lobster, 
but rather with cheaper Canadian lobsters. When Chef Ramsay confronts David about this, he downplays it by saying, same waters, North Atlantic waters. Same waters, North Atlantic waters. Ramsay says that there's a big difference in terms of taste and flavor, with Maine being twice the price of Canadian. David tries to deflect away with excuses. Once again, David finds this unfair. As Gordon Ramsay continues his intervention at the Black Pearl, he implements a series of changes aimed at addressing the issues he's identified. Gordon introduces a new dish, lobster bernays, to the menu. He personally teaches the preparation of this dish to Phil, the chef, and the owners. In a significant step, the staff votes for Greg to be the general manager. This decision reflects the staff's confidence in Greg and their desire for a single, consistent leader. Gordon's intervention also includes a physical transformation of the restaurant. His design team remodels the restaurant, giving it a fresh and updated look, which naturally David is not a fan of. It includes a neat lobster claw game machine, where if the customers can catch the lobster, they get to eat it for free. Alongside this, Gordon writes a new menu, aiming to improve the quality and appeal of the food offerings. The whole staff absolutely loves the new menu, with one exception. The menu changes are met with resistance from David, who criticizes them, of course. The column should be yellow. Moving on though, in a significant administrative change, Gordon draws up a contract, making Greg the official general manager. This formalizes the decision made earlier by the staff and solidifies Greg's leadership role. All three owners, David, Brian, and Greg, sign the contract, indicating their agreement to this new management structure. The staff rally behind Greg. Despite this, Gordon has reservations if Greg actually has the ability to be the leader of the restaurant. During the final service, it is Greg expediting in the kitchen, while David and Brian come to the restaurant not as owners, but as guests. The final service, despite some struggles, goes relatively well. This suggests that the changes Gordon has implemented are having a positive impact. In addition to that, it soon becomes apparent not everyone is satisfied with the changes. David and Brian criticize Gordon's interventions, even hinting that they plan on going back to their original coleslaw rather than using Chef Ramsay's version. The episode ends with Chef Ramsay sitting down with Greg, David, and Brian one last time. While praising Greg, Ramsay says that his two partners don't give a damn. He especially has choice words for David, stating that he has never met someone who is so full of crap in his whole life. Then David responds by calling Gordon the nickname of Gordy. Gordy, you're ungrateful. What follows next is many more bleeped out words between the two of them. Gordon then recounts their first encounter. When David came in looking like the Prince of Darkness, as the moment when it all started. Since then, it has all been non-stop downhill. Ramsey mocks David's Latin use of the term Humanus Americanus to reference the Canadian versus Maine lobster debate. Humanus Americanus, same animal, right? Finally, Ramsey says that David himself is a major roadblock to the restaurant's success. David tries to downplay this by saying that he actually liked the menu changes Chef Ramsey made, despite earlier saying that he didn't. As Chef Ramsay prepares to exit the restaurant, David finally challenges him to return in the future, to prove to him that they will succeed. Ramsay leaves with the final words, time will tell. The key question remains though, is the restaurant still open? Well, Gordon revisited the restaurant again in a subsequent follow-up episode. As the revisited episode reveals, the restaurant is no longer in operation. In fact, it closed just four days after the episode aired. They had already been struggling before the show, but David's public antics and the revelation about the Canadian lobster probably didn't help their cause. Yelp reviews following the filming were mostly negative, with complaints mainly focused on the quality of the food. In the revisitation episode, we see that Gordon connects with Stephen, the now former server from the Black Pearl that he was a fan of. Stephen reveals that the restaurant reverted back to its previous ways, including the menu. David even sold the lobster machine that Gordon had brought in. In a detailed letter, reportedly from all three owners, David expressed harsh criticisms about Gordon's influence, blaming him for a 50% decrease in their sales. In the letter, David says part of the following. After three years, we have fried our last clam and shucked our last oyster. 
As you may know, in February, we filmed an episode of Kitchen Nightmares at our restaurant, hoping for the best. We were naive, believing that the show was at least somewhat honest. We truly felt we could learn something from that jerk, and we anticipated a solid boost in sales from the publicity. But the sad fact is, from the beginning, it was clear that the show was a joke. From the very first day they were initiated, the changes Gordy Ramsay made were ridiculed by the press, hated by our regular customers, and were the direct cause of a 50% drop in revenues. And we were never able to recover financially. Our hope was that we would benefit from the publicity of participating in that horrid reality TV series. But the promised air date of May 2008 turned out to be a lie, and we were not able to sustain ourselves until the end of September, when it was finally broadcast, especially with the damage inflicted upon us by the producers and star of KN. KN is simply a series of setups, staged to illustrate situations that fit their script. And, as you would expect, their expert editors tell only half the story. The part that makes their star shine brightest. All of my brilliant and pointed comebacks were left on the cutting room floor. Darn the luck. In fact, Gordo's menu changes were horrible and mirrored the buffet offerings of a cruise ship in the 1950s. Lobster Bernays? Shrimp Louie with green goddess dressing? His ideas were laughable and proved to be utterly failures. His innovations had nothing to do with our concept of a New England lobster shack, something he clearly knows nothing about. For God's sake, he thinks the Canadian and Maine lobster are two different species. Maybe he thinks Canadian lobsters have an accent. Butter, eh? Finally, his big design change, the lobster arcade game, was nothing short of asinine. After the filmed grand reopening dinner, attended by actors, we learned, who responded to the producer's Craigslist ad and were instructed to order the new Gordy Ramsay special, very few ever order the lobster Bernays again. And who can blame them? Greasy potatoes, buckets of oil, egg and butter. Nice one, Gordo. Real good idea. Of course it didn't work. It served us right for allowing a potty mouth tea bag to mess with our New England cuisine. We should have taken a page out of history, revolted and sent to packing a bleeding back to King George. Anyway, enough sour grapes. While I hope Gordo meets an untimely death so that I can dance on his grave, it is time to move on. For now, we'll take advantage of the newfound holes in our schedules to relax with our families and friends. Love and best fishes, David, Greg, and Brian. It's unclear how much of that was written by David versus Greg and Brian. It sounds like it was mostly his words, though. It's hard to imagine the other two writing something so negative. Anyways, with newfound time on his hands, David decided to resume his music career, releasing an album called The Quickening. Unfortunately, due to copyright restrictions, we can't play any of his music in this video. However, we have included as a link in the description for you to check out his music if you wish. As for Brian, not much is known about him. But Greg, according to his LinkedIn, had a successful career in several different restaurants. On a positive note, the waiter whom Gordon conversed with in the revisited episode of Kitchen Nightmares is Stephen O'Connor. A glance at his IMDb profile reveals that post his appearance on the show, Stephen has carved out a successful career in the field of casting. He has been recognized for his work, winning the Los Angeles Associate Services Casting Director Spotlight Award in 2019. More recently, in 2021, he received an Emmy for his contribution to a TV series titled the healing power of dude. In addition to his casting achievements, Steven has also taken on several acting roles. It appears that among all the individuals featured in the episode, Steven has experienced the most success. Good on him, he seems like a nice guy. In conclusion, while the Black Pearl's restaurant journey post Kitchen Nightmares was fraught with challenges leading to its closure, it paved the way for individuals like Steven O'Connor to find their own paths to success. This story serves as a reminder that even in difficult circumstances, there can be opportunities for growth and success.